haven't done this before, but I think we'll give it a shot. So this year has been an incredible learning curve. Um, I've got to shoot with my, some of the dream clients that I've wanted to shoot for for a long time. I've got to go to some amazing countries um, and shoot beautiful work. Um, but I've also learned more than I have in the past five or six years of doing this. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ireland and I shoot for menswear, women's wear, beauty and lifestyle clients in Ireland and you know hopefully in the future do some stuff in London, um, Milan, Paris, that's the goal. So I'm making this video to instead of doing like an Instagram recap this year which I normally just put up a few stories and, and you know kind of talk about here's five or ten things that was great this year and here's at the top clients I worked with, you know, top shoots I did, top people I met. I think, I think it's important because, you know, content is changing a lot. The way people view things is changing a lot. So I wanted to sit down and talk about what I've learned face to face and I can help some people along the way uh, on their journey with whatever business you might have. This, this, this could be um, beneficial to most people. Um, but for me or for anyone in my industry, I think it'll be especially helpful. So I'm gonna talk about five lessons today that I've learned in 2022. Lesson number one is there is no perfect tool for your business. At the start of this year, I was still shooting with some of the gear I was shooting with since 2019. Three years on, the gear was getting quite tattled down. The stuff stopped working. It was a bit of a nightmare. It took me a while to be able to put myself in the position to get new gear and, and just some stuff I needed. You know, the industry changes, technology changes really, really fast and you need to be able to keep up with it. And one thing I learned was, you know, how did I even make that work? When I made it work three years ago, but for now, why isn't this working for me? Why do I need more gear and, you know, this and that? And then, I, you know, you always hear a lot of people say is, you know, you need the top camera, the beautiful lenses, the, the really bright lights, whatever it is, you know, the top gimbals, whatever you need for your business to succeed. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's true at all. I really think that if you're passionate enough and you're driven enough to make something work, you're gonna make it work with what's in front of you. And it was difficult for the first half of the year. The times were changing, you know, social content was changing, production was changing, resolution types and, you know, the way people shoot, you know, didn't work every single time. Not every video, not every photo was perfect, but I made it work regardless. And then in August, 2022 of this year, um, I bought some new equipment, got myself back on the road. Whatever camera you can afford, whatever, you know, computer, lights, lenses. I started off with a Canon 80D in 2017 and it's gotten to me to where I am today. Um, it boosted the business to where it needed to be. It boosted my skills in photography and video to where it needed to be today. And it gave me the basic knowledge and I just didn't need the perfect stuff. I didn't need the perfect equipment. You know, at the time you, think you can reach a level where you do need new equipment and you kind of realize that for yourself at the time and you'd only realize that yourself for me when i had the add i was transferring into higher ticket clients and i realized okay i'm shooting bigger stuff i'm shooting much more nicer stuff now i could only shoot uh, 1080 at the time you know and then i realized okay i need a 4k camera because i can't push this camera anymore i can't push this piece of equipment anymore to be able to do what i want to do that is a practical reasoning for needing new equipment or needing a new tool for your business if you have an old computer you know you have an old macbook 2010 or 11 for example but you can't edit on it properly you know the codecs for cameras are very different now so it won't read it properly everything's really slow um, and you physically can't really get your job done and um, that's when that's a practical reason for needing something new and needing a new piece of equipment you don't need stuff just because it's everyone has it and it's flashy and it's the most popular thing it's not going to make you any better uh, it's you yourself that can make yourself better it's it's your your own talent and your own drive to want to do something which is going to make something work um, and that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is you need to allow for you time. When I say this it's typically kind of based around burnout. This year I burnt out maybe three times and um, which doesn't sound like a lot but in the grand scheme of things it is because burnout can really really affect your motivation, your drive to go forward. I think there is no best way to avoid burnout for me and it might help some people is to schedule ahead time for yourself if you're really busy in a year let's say you have a month fully booked with client work and um, with the meetings with some heavy personal work you need to be able to plan ahead 
after to be able to give yourself that time. For example, busy month in October, you know, I needed to be able to say, okay, end of October, I'm gonna take a week off. I'm gonna take a day off. This doesn't have to be a specific amount of time. Whatever works for you is really important. Sometimes I'll just wake up, you know, and I'll not have a lot of work in front of me and I might need a day off and I'll take it off. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't need to be hustling 24 seven. Although other people tell you, it is a good way to get things done and it can be fun for the first few months, but you definitely need you time or else you won't be able to operate at a level that you want to operate. And for me, that was definitely the case. I could not operate at such a high level and um, going constantly and constantly because I'd get burnt down, burnt out completely then. Um, and I wouldn't have any motivation to go forward. And for me, I think what worked was, was taking some time away from the creative side of things, from the business side of things, um, just hanging out with some mates, hanging out with family, uh, and just taking my head and space away from that completely and focusing on, you know, home life, family life, friends, um, and then going back to it feeling fresh. Really, really important. Recovery time is just as important as the heavy work time and, you know, the time you schedule in for that and um, because recovery is, is hugely hugely a big part of how you operate and it, it'll it'll just keep pushing you forward so that's lesson number two lesson number three be open to meeting people outside of your niche i met someone called Leighton penrose this year leading social it's a digital marketing agency um, and back in april we were shooting some videos for his social channel for linkedin instagram um, and TikTok. In one of those videos, they were short form content. He just said that, you know, you need to meet people outside of your niche. So, you know, for, for, for me, if you know, I'm a photographer, I was mostly just mixing with people in that, in that industry. Models, producers, directors, creative people, um, which was great, but I realized there was a huge benefit from meeting people outside of that niche. People in the, in the marketing space, people in the, you know, um, life coaches, um, personal trainers, people that have the kind of same mindset that you do um, as working for yourself or anyone that works for themselves or anyone that has their own, anyone that is like really motivated or really driven to do something cool or, or make something you know incredible. Um, we all kind of have the same mind and I think that it was really really important that I talk to these people, have good conversations with them and not to just talk to them to get some work, to make some money because you can't go into something, you can't go into a group of people thinking, I'm gonna go and go meet these people, they're gonna give me loads of work because they're gonna think I'm great. Um, you need to have conversations with these people about yourself, about themselves, and learn from each other. You might learn a lot. I learned a lot about Leighton, I learned a lot about his agency, um, how he operates his business, which I apply to myself a lot of the time. Yeah, just a lot of external things that he said to me that I could apply to myself. Changed a lot of how I operated during the year. Uh, it goes for the same with Leighton, one of my best friends, Thomas. We're kind of in the same industry, but he, again, like, you know, he does he does a bit more of a, more the social marketing aspect of it. It has a bit more of a wider brain when it comes to how social works. So, you know, I learned a lot from him a lot of the time. You know, I met another friend um, during a shoot who he was modeling for, um, Will Matthews, former rugby player, had a lot of insight on you know, how to operate personally and how to make sure that you're in top shape for your business. Another person that changed my perspective that you know, maybe last year, the year before, I wouldn't even think of, of meeting or talking to because they wouldn't add value, which is a really bad way to think. So that's lesson number three. Be open to meeting people outside of your niche. So that brings me on to lesson number four. Listen more talk less. Whether I was in a group of people I didn't know or having dinner with someone or a group of people basically, I would have talked a lot to try and get accepted within that group. And that's just not the way you should be doing things. You can learn a lot again from from a group of people talking to each other and um, you know how they how they operate, how they view certain things and you know some of their knowledge that you can apply to yourself. It's really important to be able to take in as much information from money when you can, friends, family. You know, it's good to talk about yourself in some groups or some settings, but I think it's more important to, to listen um, and to listen to people uh, because, yeah, people really appreciate that too. And I think it's just, you know, it's great to be able to hear someone's opinion on something or, you know, I find it fascinating to, to hear someone's, you know, routine on how they run you know a business or how they you know work at their job or how they you know just do certain things I, I just find it really fascinating and I, I like to listen to people so if there's one thing that you can do next year and um, 
you know, is, is listen, is listen more. You, you'd be surprised what you could, what you could, uh, what you could learn. Not a lot on that topic, but I think the statement itself is quite important. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just think it's, I think it's cool. So lesson number five is a big one. You have to learn that it's okay to say no. For the past few years, I've been doing every single job that's come to me. You know, that pays or whatever. It, even if it didn't, I'd, I'd do it just to meet people. And that's really important for the first few years of trying to grow um, as a creative or as a business. It's really important to be able to meet as many people as possible. Um, and that was great, but it comes to a certain point that you need to be able to say no to go in the right direction. Being that saying no to a client that isn't really your type of, of niche that you want to shoot, I've seen a big benefit in saying no to the stuff that I just don't want to do or it's going to cause more hassle. Taking on jobs that are going to take time away from you, working with the clients that you actually enjoy working with and that you want to help and that the work you want to produce to put on your portfolio um, because at the end of the day being a specialist in something is going to benefit you more than being an all-rounder. Now I'm not saying it's wrong to do everything, you know, some people like to do that and that's fine. I think that's really beneficial as well but I think in general if you want to be one specific niche, if you want to shoot cars, you want to shoot corporate events, corporate people, you know, corporate companies, I think you just doing that after a certain amount of time when those clients start coming in more and more and more and you're, you can afford to be able to just do that, it's important to just focus on that and take less of the stuff that you don't want to do. I'm not saying cut it out completely in the first week, but it's important to try and slowly cut it out so that you can become that guy or that person that shoots this. Hey, I need, I need Dara for you know a fashion video. He does fashion. It's on his portfolio, and it's what I started applying to my feed the past year, really. You know, just those fashion clients, and I shoot a lot of stuff that isn't fashion. Don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to do less of it this year, and anything that I do post is fashion. It's fashion, beauty. You know, there's some documentary work on there which I enjoy doing. It's all in that kind of realm of stuff that I want to shoot. So, I think it's really important that you shoot the stuff you want to shoot and showcase that but don't showcase everything because it's just going to put you down a hole of like shooting stuff that you don't want to shoot anymore and it's going to make you unmotivated you're not going to enjoy the job um, I've got a goal in the next five years to shoot some fashion shows you know Milan, Paris, London it'd be amazing and if I want to do that I can't be just taking everything in and being known as the all-rounder um, so you know say no more and you'll be surprised what happens I don't really do a lot of talking at all a lot of people told me you need to talk more you need to do more informational stuff. Um, it doesn't really fit on my feed, so I think you know, I put it up here. And maybe, maybe you know, people can learn from it. I've really enjoyed doing this. Um, hopefully, I can make more now, 2023. But if you like it, please let me know, and you know, I'll definitely do more of these. Definitely do more informational videos on, you know, maybe going more in depth on photography, um, on video, and uh, again, the niche that I'm in, uh, and hopefully, it can it can help a few people. Um, so yeah, I'm Darren Neal and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great new year.